That starts at 7. And then Atlantic Beach will be Thursday, October 10th at 7 p.m. That's going to be at the Community Presbyterian Church in their uh, town hall, township hall. So, uh, just by a quick show of hands, we'd just kind of like to know how you've heard about the meeting. Um, anybody here from next door? Nobody uses it. Oh, one person. Yay. Uh, Facebook, our Facebook page. Face Facebook sent out. Okay. Newspaper, Beaches Leader. Thank you. Our website. Okay, good. Our newsletter. Oh, look, they read our newsletter. <laughs> Yay, that's awesome. Um, and then friend or neighbor, word of mouth. Okay, good, good. Well, this is a great crowd. This is a, uh, you're, you're in for a, uh, a treat. Actually, it's a very good learning session on your seat. Um, uh, Jer Jerry Holland's office provided the pamphlets that actually explain and gives you the, the uh, what's going to be on the ballot, and he's going to talk more about that. For those who do not want to have a paper copy, we do have a QR, QR code up here that you can just uh, snap with your phone, and you can have it on your phone. He'll probably talk more about that too. So we will start with Jerry Holland, who is our Duval County Supervisor of Elections followed by Bill Killingsworth of Atlantic Beach, he's our city manager, and then Mike Stokopoulos of Jacksonville Beach City Manager who will be cleaning it up for us. Jerry? It is such a pleasure to come out to the beaches. Uh, it reminds me, it's been 25 years since I represented the beaches on the Jacksonville City Council. And see a many of you bring back a lot of memories. So, uh, but it's good to be here. to the amendment so that you've got some uh, ability to make your decision on that. And obviously I'm not here to give you a pro and con because obviously in the elections office we're right down the middle just trying to give you access to the information and where to get that information. Just so that you know also, all these amendments, there's six of them. You can know which ones are represented by, put on there by the state legislature and which ones are citizens initiatives. The way you can tell the difference is this. If it's a citizen's initiative, it must have a fiscal impact statement. So amendments three and four were citizens' initiatives. You may say, what does it take to put about uh, an initiative on the ballot? A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. It takes, you need 8% of the amount of voters that was in the last presidential election. So there was over 11 million voters in the 2020 Florida elections. Uh, for president, and therefore they needed over 800, almost 850,000 petitions, but you have to go out and get about 130% of the amount you needed because of a lot of times when people are signing petitions, they do it in a hurry, or they're not that interested, but they'll sign your petition, so it takes probably close to 1.2 million signatures to get something on the ballot in this election. Of these uh, amendments that we'll look at, the first one we're going to take up is amendment number one. It's about having partisan elections for our city school board districts. Right now what you have is nonpartisan elections, which means that in the first election that we just had in August, a person can win it in the first election because everybody's on the ballot, it's nonpartisan, whoever gets 50% plus one wins the race, no matter how many candidates. And if they don't get 50% plus one, then the top two candidates go on to the runoff in November. What will change if this is approved is you will go to partisan school board elections, which means you will have Republican primary in the first election. So any multiple Republican candidates will run in order to face their uh, Democratic candidate, if there is one, in the general election, as well as Democratic candidates will run against each other in the primary. And if you have a no-party affiliation candidate, they will not show up until November. 
you'll see something that you will not ever see hardly on a school board race if this passes, which will be write-ins. Would you learn the meaning of a write-in? Is that will be the closed primaries, you know, in those elections because it will be partisan. So again, all, often people ask, if I vote yes for something, what does it mean? And if I vote no for something, what does it mean? Always remember this. If you vote no, the world stays the way it is. No matter what the amendment is, no, everything stays the way it is. Yes means there will be a change. So never be confused by is yes, yes, or no, no. It is just that. No will keep the world the way it is. Yes will change it. So these are here for your partisan elections and uh, for school board races. Uh, now, I won't take my more than that. We'll go on to number two. Any questions on if you want me to take a quick seat? Okay, no questions, Tammy. <laughs> All right. And then, as it says, both of yes will obviously be partisan elections. No, the world stays the way it is. Okay, amendment number two. Now, sometimes there are amendments, and I'm not putting this label on anybody, but they're feel good amendments. By that I mean, is, is it adding something to what you've got or taking something away from what you've got? What this is doing is codifying that in our Constitution, our Florida State Constitution, we will make it so that we have preserved forever fishing and hunting so that no one can take it away from us. Not that anybody was planning on taking it away from us, but this will prevent it from being taken away. And although it says forever, realize this, any constitutional amendment can also be changed by another constitutional amendment. So, but it is difficult. And that's why a lot of things, and a lot of times people will want to do a constitutional amendment because once it's there, it can only be changed by another constitutional amendment. And we'll get to one that you're actually changing a constitutional amendment. So on this, it's basically codifying that again, we are protecting the right to hunt and fish in the state of Florida. It also wants to make sure that all the laws that are put forth to us by the Florida wildlife, nothing goes away there. So same laws, same restrictions that are in place today will continue to be in place. It just codifies that we have that right to hunt and fish. Okay, amendment number two. Three. Three. Yes, yeah, see, y'all are paying attention. I'm very proud of it. I was just seeing those. No, I won't say that. Okay, in amendment number three, this is one put on, this is a citizen's initiative, was put on to legalize the recreation use of marijuana for those adult, for those who are over 21 years of age. It does not allow the personal growing of marijuana. It just allows to have the possession of three ounces of marijuana, or if it's a concentrate, it's actually five grams, I believe it is. Now, this will have a, a financial impact statement. Some of the highlights as we get to the financial impact statement will be such that they predict revenues will be $195 million annually. Uh, they don't know what cost will be associated with those revenues, but obviously it will be taxed and there will be a sales tax for the sale of the marijuana. Now the legislature will have to come by and also in doing so, they'll have to look at certain legislative issues that also will go along with this. And also remember this, for those who do support it, it's not if it passes in November, you can't do anything for six months after it passes, okay? So, uh, and also, it does not change the federal laws that actually prohibit it, which really makes an interesting concept, that it will prove it statewide, but it does not change the federal law. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. Again, the six months with approval. And then we'll still have the same situation where you will have the licensed places that can sell as they do now with the medical marijuana. Amendment number four. And I also want to say a couple things on each amendment. 
Required by state law, amendment titles must be must be no more than, I believe it's 15 words, and then also the statement down below it can be no more than 75 words. And in this case, because it is a citizen initiative, there is a fiscal impact statement. And understand this, when they're even required to have a fiscal impact statement, doesn't always mean they can codify and say what exactly the fiscal impact statement. You'll see sometimes, as this one will say, the financial impact of this amendment cannot be determined due to the ambiguity and uncertainty surrounding the amendment's impact. So from that standpoint, you're required to have one, but if you can't get to what it is, you must state that. And that's what the case in this. All the language will be on there when it comes to both the ballot summary, the ballot title, the financial impact. You will see all that on your ballot, and also we will have it in both English and Spanish. This will be a two-page ballot, meaning front and back, when you go to vote at this election. Many, many, and also when you get to Atlantic Beach and Jacksonville Beach, you will get a two individual pages, you know, not front, back, as well as the next one. So uh, be prepared. That's why we sent out sample ballots. Make sure you take the time, make your decision to bring your sample ballot into the polls with you so it's easier to make those decisions. So again, this will, this particular amendment, amendment says on the ballot summary, no law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortions before viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. This amendment does not change the legislature's constitutional authority to require notification to a parent or guardian before a minor has an abortion. And as you can see, well, that was the financial impact statement there. And then again, those are the, the abilities of what will happen on yes or no. No. She's going to hold questions. I ask, but we will get back to that, I promise. All right, amendment number five. We're back now to those put on by the legislature. This one here, there's two types of changes to laws that are required to be in a constitutional amendment. Any change to election laws, like term limits or any of those, must go to a constitutional amendment. And any changes to exemptions or anything that has to do with ad valorem taxes must go to the citizens in an amendment. So this is required. The legislature couldn't just do this by passing the law. This one, and it helps to have been property appraiser for eight years to explain this one. Uh, this one here, what it does is you know on your homestead exemption, you have two $25,000 exemptions. The first one on the, from value of zero to 25, but that is also for the municipal taxes as well as the school board. This does not impact that 25,000 because it only impacts an exemption that applies only to the municipal ad valorem, which is Jacksonville Beaches and Mall. So in the second 25,000, which is between the value of 50 and 75,000 of your home, this will put an escalator that will increase the exemption by the amount of the consumer price index, which don't get too excited because if this would have been applied 10 years ago, over that 10 year period, based on what the CPI has done in the last 10 years, your exemption would have gone from the current 25 to about 32,700, which would save you about $80 a year. So I don't want you to get too excited, but from the standpoint, it is a savings. And also, even if we are below zero or it's a deflationary, it will not cause it to go down. So whatever goes up over time, it stays there, you know. And we've seen CPI as low as in 0.6 of percent to as high as two years ago at 8%. So it does make an impact, but on an average, it's usually less than 2%. So this, again, is an amendment that will change and add you an inflator in your second 25,000 of that homestead exemption. 
It will not affect any school board taxes or revenues because, again, it's not applied to the first $25,000, only to that second. These are offices like your CFO, the, the uh, governor, the, you know, all the ones that are statewide. Uh, there's a public financing aspect, which basically the purpose is if you sign up to get those public funds, it therefore limits your campaigning account money. With the exception, it doesn't limit whatever you want to raise in the pack. So that was a concern. Is it necessary? Uh, in 20 in 2022, uh, it, it amounted to about $10 million of state-funded money to candidate, candidates for statewide positions. In 2024, it amounted to $13 million given to candidates in statewide uh, positions. So this year, uh, sen uh, State Senator Hudson decided to put on the ballot felt it could be other purposes the money could be used for to give you the option whether or not you want to repeal that amendment that was passed in 1998. I will say they tried in 2010 to repeal it at that point. Voters voted against repealing. So you have an option for the second time if you would like to repeal the public financing of statewide elected positions. So you have now just been educated on all six amendments. Understand this, it must be 60% plus one statewide. So let's say, for example, Duval County passes amendment number three and the state, it fails. It doesn't mean Duval County now can legalize marijuana, okay? In the same way, if we were against it and the rest of the state was for it, it would be legal. So again, it's a statewide vote. It's not county by county that the laws apply. So. That is my representation of your six amendments. I hope you have a better understanding. And Sandy, my cue is to walk away. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brooke Hillsworth. I'm the city manager for the uh, city of Atlantic Beach. I'm going to quickly go over the charter amendments. Ours are pretty simple. There's uh, one that's real meaningful, one that's slightly less meaningful, and then the most the rest of them are, are either things that the charter review committee wanted to emphasize, but they don't really change anything, or they're technical things in our, uh, in our charter. Before I get started, the city of Atlantic Beach is a, a lot like a lot of other municipalities in terms of the process. We put together a citizens committee that put forth a series of recommendations to the commission. The commission then held hearings on those recommendations and then pushed the ones forward that uh, they thought were most meaningful. There was only one that I remember that didn't get pushed forward in terms of the recommendations and that was one to actually increase the number of commissioners. And the Atlantic Beach is a small town with 13,500, you know, going from five to seven commissioners. Honestly, in my opinion, it didn't make sense. So, I, and it, I don't think it generated a lot of controversy. So, in terms of uh, the first one, which is, I'm going to go in order in which they impact uh, our charter. So, I'm going in the order of, uh, of the charter. 
in Section 6 was qualifications and um, disqualifications. And the thing that changed there was the committee felt that there was a need for our elected officials to be more vested in the community. And the way they chose to do that was to increase the residency requirement before you could run. So it went to the recommendation was to go from two to four years. And so you'll see that on the chart. The next item is uh, powers. Those two items in the powers section that changed. Uh, the first one, we have a provision, uh, it's, it's actually it's a limitation of powers on the commission, and that they couldn't sell a park or lease a park for non-park purposes without doing it unanimously. So there was a recommendation that uh, that couldn't happen without going to a referendum. Quite frankly, though, I mean, I've been 20 days, I've been working in the city for one year, so I don't know that my um, intuition of the community and the commission is a, is a absolute, but I find it hard to believe that any commission would have voted to sell a park. But um, there was a recommendation to require that to be a referendum, and the commission pushed that forward. The other was to um, create a power, which was this item 15, which is exercise authority permitted by law for the protection and preservation of beaches, marshes, maritime, tree canopy, and property for environmental stewardship. If you look at the power sections, the commission already has the powers to enact laws. But I think what this does, so this doesn't really grant the commission anything above and beyond what they can do right now. I think really what it does is it emphasizes the importance of those things um, to the commission and to the public as a whole. So in section 15, this is really uh, a cleanup. It's, it's not so much a technical cleanup, it's more of a functional cleanup. So we had our commissioners which started in November, but oftentimes the elections weren't certified by November. So then we had this awkward thing where they were supposed to start, but they weren't certified. Um, and so we changed that to December, because most of the time that appears to, to be a safe threshold and made it clear that if they're not certified, then, then they'll wait until that point which they are certified, um, which is, quite frankly, the statute for the way we've been practicing it anyways. So this is kind of a functional cleanup. Appointment of duties, this is, a, I would argue, is a functional, duty, a functional cleanup as well. Our charter had the city clerk as the supervisor of elections, and she does not look anything like Jim. Um, <laughs> so we are correctly uh, identifying her as the filing officer for the city. And then I would argue this and the next, and they're really together, but uh, they're in two sections and they, um, they complement each other. There was a recommendation to go to the primary general form of election. Right now, we just had uh, a general election, so if you have three people win, whoever gets the most votes wins. And so there was a desire not to have a plurality win, but to require a majority win. And to do that, we enter into a primary contest. So if there's more than two candidates, then there'll be a primary. If a candidate wins by majority, so that 50 plus one, then they won, and there's no general election. If a, there isn't a candidate who hits that majority threshold, then the first and second place candidates will move on to the general election, which is exactly what the next slide says. And so I think this is probably the most significant charter amendment. It, uh, it affects the outcomes of elections, right? And it, it does it in a way that I think most people find that appropriate. And then, this is, uh, I think this is a cleanup largely too. We changed, so because the charter amendment previously would set us up for a primary and a general, and we used the term regular amendment in our periodic review of the charter, we wanted to make sure that the charter committee reviewed and the results of those reviews got uh, taken to the general election. So what you'll see is regular election got taken out in the uh, general in its place. And then uh, the, uh, our city uh, 
but recommended that the charter review start in February as opposed to January. And I'll be honest, I don't know why, but there was some reason that was important to her, and so that made it into the uh, technical cleanup. And I believe with that, I will wait until Mike does his presentation and we'll stand by for questions. Thank you. I don't have a slide presentation, but we're going to leave the picture of the turtle up there. Or <laughs> you can all leave a look at me and look at the turtle while I speak. I think you all want to look at the turtle. Uh, I'm Mike Stavopoulos, I'm the city manager for Jacksonville Beach. And uh, thank you for having us here tonight to explain what are on our ballots for this November. For the city of Jacksonville Beach, we have two charter amendments that are going to the public for the vote. Uh, if any of you are interested, the ordinance number is 2024-8216. In order for the uh, charter initiatives to be placed on the ballot, our city council must go through an ordinance adopting the language to put it on the ballot and send it to the supervisor of elections by a date certain. They make sure it's on the ballot. All of this information that I'm going to talk about tonight can be found on our website. So if you go to the City of Jacksonville Beach website, you can find the language there. The two items that we have are, are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one has a ballot title that reads, Removing Gender References as Associated with Job Descriptions or Duties Referenced in the City Charter. If you look at the Jacksonville Beach City Charter, and based on how old our document is, there are many places within the charter where it says the title of a position, such as city manager, chief financial officer, mayor, mayor pro tem, etc. And then afterwards, it either assigns a he slash she, or in some cases, he him, all the way throughout the document. This removes all of those individual references and reverts back to the actual title of the position. So if it starts off by saying the city manager is vested with the following powers and authorities, the next sentence will also say the city manager has the responsibility to do X, the city manager cannot do Y, the city manager can also be considered for Z. But it references by the job title all the way through the document. The reason there's not a slide for it is there's multiple pages, there's about seven pages of strike through and underline that change all of these references throughout the document. Uh, but again, if you're interested in seeing it, you can go to our website and see it there. The second one is a glitch that we are trying to resolve. This was identified by our city council uh, back in May, and that is that there are, uh, uh, there are two sections of the charter that are in conflict with one another. So specifically, question number two in the title is, uh, the ballot, I'm sorry, the ballot title in question for the second one is clarifying that the mayor of Pro Tem fills a vacancy in the office of the mayor. Right now, if you look at section five of our city charter, it says if anything happens to the mayor during the course of fulfilling the term, the mayor pro tem shall fill the remainder of that term for the remainder of the mayor's term. There is, however, another section in our charter, section 23, that says if there's a vacancy on the council, that vacancy shall be appointed by the remainder of council. Since the mayor pro tem and the mayor position are technically a position of council, they are in conflict with one another, so it has to be rectified. So what is being proposed by council is that the first language in section five take precedence and that 23, section 23 be revised so that it's no longer in conflict. So if there is a vacancy in the mayoral position during the term, the mayor pro tem will serve the remainder of that term. And those are the two items that we have on for consideration by our opponent. And with that, I will wrap it up with the ninth batter on the panel. <laughs> Identify to whom you are addressing your question. It could be to all three or someone specific. 
and please keep your questions brief and not personal. Refrain from giving background or opinion statements in order to allow as many questions to be asked within the allotted time. So with that, I will ask our panel to come back up. Um, and please, so with the raise of hand, any questions? No? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. On the amendment to abortion, we still have to follow the state rules also uh, uh, because I think the state, unless they changed it recently, but I've been so busy with the national lately, I've kind of let the state go. But in the state, it said sick people could have an abortion up to six weeks. And I haven't seen where that's been changed, so I'm just wondering if they say six weeks and your doctor says in 10 weeks you can have an abortion, uh, do we stay with the state or do we go with the amendment? <laughs> the amendment will, will replace the state no six case. weeks. It will not go to a number of weeks. It will go to viability. Some say that will create some lawsuits of what is, when is viability, but it does take away a number of weeks. So just a comment, I have a comment and a question comment on Mike's presentation. Um, some of you may, may remember I had a sidebar question about the 16 um, charter amendments that we had in 2022. So we're down to two now. One of them is kind of a repeat because it failed. The other one that failed, we, I don't think we decided to revisit that. So hopefully this will make it easier for our Jacksonville, Jacksonville Beach voters um, that it's not 16, it's just those two. And then the question for uh, Jerry, thank you for coming out today. Amendment three, I had a question this morning from one of our, one of our Jacks Beach hoteliers about it, will this be in conflict with the Florida Clean Indoor Air Act, which specifically mentions tobacco smoke? That may be too far into the weeds for you, but if you could direct us on where to get that answer. Well, one of the reasons, and if you look at the amendment of the Israel Amendment, is if it passes, it doesn't go in effect for six months after it's been certified. The reason for that is there is some cleanup the legislature will have to do. That's part of it. Okay. You know, decide where, when, those kind of situations to restrict, just like in the Clean Air Act, where, like in some of the beaches in Jacksonville, said you couldn't smoke in parks. That was talking about how, how again, tobacco products. They will have to, again, clean up some of this in the legislature next year before this actually takes effect. Uh, one other thing, too, as we we're talking, the amendments as they're placed on the ballot, obviously we place the six in the order to stay given. We are also placing the ones for Atlantic Beach and Jacksonville Beach in the order they have requested. So just in case you see that order, I don't determine that order. That was determined by the two beaches. And into the weeds was an unintentional pun. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, I apologize. I didn't hear you when you were giving your total. Just a quick question. I haven't looked at all the amendments the states took on there. Are any of them, if you vote no, is a yes? No. As, as the, the theory of the bill, no, it's a good question. And as I spoke, if you vote no, the world stays the way it is. If you vote yes, there will be a change. Everyone is that way. It's never a yes as a no to it. But no, world stays the way it is. Yes, there is a change. I mean, it has happened in the past. Yes. yes. More so on local amendments, sometimes it's more confusing, but not on state amendments. They have to follow that guideline. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jerry, on the, the abortion one, what I'm understanding is it would go from, I think it's now you said six weeks, and it would go to viability. To the, to what? To the viability. The viability. Yes. It is whatever. And then does the amendment that's already there say that it should be done by a doctor or does it say a health care? Because this seems to say just a health care um, provider, which could be just somebody that sets up the shop with a hand. No. No, I just no. Um, It says health care provider. It says health care provider. Right. It does not say... Does the, the one that is already on the Constitution, does it also say health care provider or does it say doctor? 
You mean as far as the state statutes? Right, right. I don't know. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for doing this. A lot of people can be, can be very confusing, so I thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I had a question on the Jack Speech one. You say that, and I know the question, sorry, but I do want to just, this is just for clarification. When you say that the mayor pro temp will build the remainder of the term of the mayor, that's even if it extends beyond the mayor pro temp's original term. And then it would be up for council to find somebody else. So if you can clarify that, I think that would be helpful. Just the timeline. So section five, the way it reads is, if a vacancy occurs in the office of mayor, or in case of the mayor's absence or disability, the mayor pro tem shall act as mayor for the unexpired term or during the continuance of the absence or disability. So it is for the term of the mayor or until there is viability for the mayor to retake over the responsibilities of the position. Does that answer your question? Yes. Well, I want to know who's the, for the remainder of whose term? Is it going to be the mayor's term, the mayor's term, the mayor's term, the mayor's term, the mayor's term? Uh, it says, as mayor for the unexpired term, I'm not an attorney, and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last year. <laughs> but my guess is if you were to ask an attorney, they would say it is the term of the mayor that they all fulfill until the completion of that term. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just to be clear, if, if the mayor were in office for one day, and the mayor for 10 was in office for two years, that person would get a four-year term, and the people wouldn't be able to pick a new mayor in two years. The way Section 5 of the Charter reads, that's correct. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions? I don't know of anybody not
gave us those instructions and it was accepted and adopted. On the marijuana one, is there any movement? I mean, the federal government, it's still illegal, right? Yes, it, it does not change the federal law. And some of that becomes issues, and obviously we've seen similar legislation pass in other states, and Colorado being an example. Part of it comes also where it becomes an issue is not so much that the feds are arresting somebody, but it becomes into the banking situation and where they can accept revenues. And so I would suspect at some point as more states, if it passes, if it doesn't, but the federal government will probably look at it in the future. You know, but it's more into the banking side, from my understanding, how it affects uh, those particular people selling it and what they can do with the revenues. So. Okay, any other questions? Thank you for coming tonight. Um, we are recording the, the meeting, so it will be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, follow us on Facebook, this is our website, and what is our meeting? Oh, okay. um, our meeting. Oh, that's right, we've got our Country Beach City Council. Um, can't inform for our term. Okay, so. Um, you can back up. You can back, back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. There you go. Those are the next meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. September 26th, Jacksonville Beach Candidate Forum. October 2nd, our normal October meeting here. That two Beach Candidate Forum. And then October 10th, uh, Bay Beach Candidate Forum. So, look forward to seeing all of you there. Uh, one last request for those who are physically able, if you could help us stack the chairs so we can get out here as soon as we can. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. <laughs>